and to see people put put things that don't matter aside and looked at him for the man that he is and the leader that he is. No classes, no classes on, Friday. on Friday or Monday. Corey and Courtney know the historic vote that put this family in the White House could never have happened without the help from another family, theirs. Uncle Mega, you know, I just can imagine him, you know, just being so proud of us to see the country come together. I think he would say, job well done. Right. More than 40 years ago, their great uncle, Medgar Evers, was denied admission to the University of Mississippi Law School, the same school the twins graduated from, simply because he was black. He knew that there were things that needed to be done, and he was willing to do them no matter what. Long before Barack Obama rallied a nation for change, Medgar Evers was willing to risk his life for it. In the segregated South during the 50s and 60s, his wife, Merle, knew her husband's dreams for equality were dangerous. Medgar was unusual in the sense that he was so committed to justice and equality and was willing to pay the price, knowing full well that at that particular time, he was putting his life on the line. The fire hoses and the dogs biting us. When I look back, I see and I feel the pain and the suffering. It was an ugly chapter in our nation's history. A time when African Americans were beaten, lynched, and killed because of the color of their skin. I wish they'd kill them all. Medgar Evers struggled to abolish laws that oppressed blacks. As a leader in the NAACP, he knew the real power was in the vote. We're not just interested in uh, voting so that uh, conditions will be improved for Negroes. We want uh, conditions improved for everybody. Getting people registered to vote was a big part of his life. A major, major part of his effort. The power was in the vote. The power was elusive because of the fear that people had. I've had a number of threatening calls, people calling me saying that they were going to kill me, saying that they were going to blow my home up, and uh, saying that I only had uh, a few hours to live. It sounds like he almost knew. He did. On June 12, 1963, a young Merle Evers and her three children were inside the family home in Jackson, Mississippi. I recall the kids saying, here comes Daddy, here comes Daddy. The children knew the sound of Daddy's car. And they pulled in the driveway behind my car. Medgar Evers was shot in cold blood by a white supremacist in the driveway of his home. He was just 37 years old. It would take another 30 years to bring his killer to justice. What do you remember about the day Medgar was assassinated? How he kissed the children, how he kissed me, how he walked out of the door, got in the car, came back in and embraced us all again. At that moment, Merle went from wife to widow, and her life changed forever. She took up her husband's cause for change and became the first woman to lead the NAACP. Hello! Last year, Merle Evers joined another cause, Barack Obama's run for the White House. She was a powerful reminder to the candidate that he is standing on the shoulders of all those who fought and died for civil rights. The next president of the United States of America! But I said to him, among other things, I want you to know that I keep you and your family in my prayers on a daily basis, as I do with my own children. He looked me in the eye, not a smile, dead serious, and he said, please, Keep me in your prayers. Oh, yeah. My Man. favorite. Ever's daughter, Rena. Yeah. Oh, he gave great hugs, too. Son, Van, and three grandchildren. That reminds me, that look reminds me of who? 
Brooke. Exactly. They do look very similar as far as how they carry themselves, even to the point of how they sit and cross their legs. I saw a photograph of Obama playing basketball. This man's feet were off of the floor. He was reaching for that ball, had it in the grasp of his hands. And I said, you know what? I see him as a leader. And that's the world that's in his hands. When the news commentators came on and said, it's over, he has won this race. I buried my head in my hands and tears began to fall. I couldn't stop them. And I said, Metke, do you see what has happened? Yesterday, Merle Evers went to Arlington National Cemetery to give her husband the news. We made it. Obama made it. My father would just be up there, just jumping for joy. And today, in the nation's capital, the Evers family is witness to history. The past and the future combined to make today happen. All persons should have an opportunity to register and vote and uh, do the things that uh, the Constitution guarantees them. I understand now that you did not die in vain. Thank you. Next, advice from a daughter... All this we will do. ...to a president. Welcome back to the Commander-in-Chief's Ball here at the National Building Museum right now, listening to the music of John Bon Jovi. Meanwhile, it had to be the best-kept secret of this incoming administration what Michelle Obama would be wearing tonight and who designed it. The First Lady says the decision was made fashionably late. Michelle Obama chose this, a white chiffon, one-shoulder gown by New York designer Jason Wu. He's just 26 years old and born in Taipei. He's a hot Hollywood favorite. They call him, in fact, the Oscar de la Renta of the new generation. Now, earlier today, Michelle wore a coat and dress designed by Isabel Toledo, a Cuban-American who grew up in New Jersey. The designer, believe it or not, didn't know until this morning that her outfit had been chosen. Toledo used yellow, she says, to symbolize optimism. The green gloves, meanwhile, J. Crew, part of the First Lady's unique style of combining high fashion with affordable pieces. By the way, tonight companies have told us they are already making their versions of Michelle's daytime and evening wear. I talked with Barack and Michelle Obama before the inauguration, and they made it clear they'll look to each other to preserve, protect, and defend their young family. Well, I mean, she's uh, she's the one who uh, always keeps me straight. Yeah, Michelle has really handled this whole process with extraordinary grace. 